Okay, so this is this is extremely difficult. Um, should it be? It probably should be. Trauma. Colon. Interesting force in our lives. We all encounter it. I think Jungians think it is there for us to resolve a part of everyone's psyche, like the primal fear of the saber-toothed tiger we have inherited from the thousands of years ago, times that we usually ignore and should not. I think the Jungian thing is he 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 imagined and his people imagined that it was a sort of uh, an organic challenge built into our psyches, trauma, and we're supposed to encounter it and we're supposed to deal with it, and and by doing so we we deepen and develop and become more full human beings. Something at which we're clearly not very good at the moment civilizationally. The focus of generational trauma, I am not a student or studier of this stuff, but as something that filters down to each, to down to such as I through older wisdoms and not wisdoms, and a certain knowledge of my own trauma and my victories over or surrenderings to, I think it is a big deal. And a lot of searching has been done for the effects of trauma on the victims of traumatic incidents from hurricanes to holocausts. I'm looking at evidence of another trauma, the one suffered by the perpetrators of acts that traumatize others. Uh, <clears throat> I'm looking at uh, the trauma, trauma of the Nazi, let's say. I'm not in sympathy, just trying to identify this thing. It could be a syndrome at the core of some societies, some societies more than others, some historic backup for my tale. The citizens of Rome lived in abject fear of their slaves. Imagine, the, um, the, the, I believe the slaves uh, uh, numbered about two thirds of the population of the city of Rome, with some good reason. I'm pretty sure the type of slavery was not as horrific as the US kind, uh, but it sure could be. Were I a Roman citizen, I'd be aware that another person must be devalued essentially for me to be the mythic person I was meant to be, the Roman. And I know on the evidence of my senses that that goal was every bit the human I was. I'd need to be narcotized by a massive myth to deny the evidence. And this would be easier for me if I was not traumatized by empathy. I would be really be advantaged if I were a psychopath. And that happened in a sort of uh, survival of the fittest. A psychopath would be the fittest Roman. And what happened to a chunk of the Roman elite? Just saying. I'd imagine when Spartacus struck, when all that pent up slave rage was suddenly released, leading by the way to acts of terror to make Boudicca blush, there was an equivalent energy among the citizens that what they had feared for generations was now happening. What has happened in my part of the planet, my 18% of the human race that has dominated the rest, has created a whole culture to justify our supremacy that may at last be breaking, is that we are traumatized this way. When every myth we have worked so hard creating has been exposed, most often by our own brothers and sisters, by our Chomskys and Finkelsteins, by our Greers and Morrisons, we are left with a horrible open wound for which we deserve no sympathy at all. Come on. However, understanding is useful. The fear that dominated the baby USA, the founded USA, that turned so easily into racism, that created racism's deepest roots, I think turns out, comes out of the dreamt of Nat Turners, the nightmare Nat Turners, the nightmare crazy horses and sitting bulls. I'm no fan of the founding fathers, you probably know, but the omission of abolition in their constitution makes for me all that followed completely fraudulent taketh the cake. 
how the rest of the West fawns upon these frosty, repressed, bigot rape racists speaks deeply of that West's ignorant fumblings today. We invent a Protestant work ethic to lambast our labor force with when every European knows in their bones that the essence of their culture is monarchy or its dreadful offspring, the Republic, for the people, by the aristocracy. However, you create that club, that elite who do not work. A community so inherently stupid that millions of units spent studying its ancestors don't help at all. The stupid world, I suggest, created by this cherished trauma. At the mention of Protestant Protestantism, it is enlightening, ho-ho, to see how one religion is affected, how it enters the life of culture differently by your bank account, your family fortunes. There's a Matt Walsh, a very stupid right-wing Matt, talking to Gillian Michaels about marriage, lovely, bruising, lesbian woman. He tells her that marriage has been this or that for thousands of years. It has been about child-rearing. He needs to read Jane Austen, Alan Silito, James Kelman, Socrates. He needs to read anything outside of his tiny, narrow book. His religion is the totem of his white trauma, very narrow. It is his masculine inability to confess, to grow up. Israel, what's happening there to us is so monumental in this way. While people slowly realize that October the 7th was not actually Hiroshima, there were no systemic rapes, nor beheadings or ba of babies or otherwise, that what Spartacus did indeed would make Hamas blush. Essentially, they knew it was coming. That whatever lies the US presidential candidates keep insisting on, the cloud that lowers is the Holocaust. Let me clarify that. The system, the relations between Israelis and Palestinians are oppressive, those of oppression. So Allah, the Romans, when you, when you are doing that, when you are living that way for 75 odd years, you know in your blood something is coming, something is due, you know it, that's the trauma. However, the uniqueness of the, the Jewish situation is that they had within a generation come out of the Holocaust. Um, that is not an excuse that any European Western country can otherwise use. That is a unique situation. And uh, I don't know how much, how much effect that has, but it must, it, I think the notion of being, of having an enemy, an enemy that is there relentlessly, that you don't deserve must be so deep in that psyche. Um, and, and I think that's part of the very sick, strange reason why the, the people who actually perpetrated the Holocaust find this bizarre identity with, with, with Zionism. I, 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 you know, I have, I'm not equal to it. Western colonial Europe's great gushing support of the killing in Gaza is the sickest of expiations of collective guilt. The ships turned away, the 2,000 years of anti-Semitism by every sect of Christians, the pogroms and persecution, that strange, unacknowledged trauma of guilt is now running riot and running red. Perhaps we are sacrificing Arabs for our sins. The substitute sacrifice is a bit of a Christian tradition after all. Can it be stemmed this flood? It has to be acknowledged first. The confession Europe has never been up to. This civilization is so stunned by its own hypocrisy, its greatest minds. So many Germans and Frenchmen have only on a shallow reading justified its weaknesses and invented a Messiah to forgive all its trespasses. We might start with looking at how many communities, not us, we have demonized in our lazy myth makings before or simultaneous with our abuse and exploitation of them. Yes, just about everyone, not us. 
and stop doing that. Stop defining ourselves by not being them, which we do with almost every breath. Perhaps be assured as the wine arises, not all white men, that yes, everybody has the potential to be as awful, that we can pick them out of the history books, that the Lakota were arrogant bullies too. But as Claudius says, quote, forgive my foul murder that cannot be since I am still possessed of those effects for which I did the murder, end quote. It may be that this acknowledgement, our very own inherited trauma and a determination to resolve it would be up there in the top 10 of human, top five, top one of human achievements. And that once we know it is the thing to do, it will not seem so daunting. And I think we don't do it because it is so huge. And we talk about great achievements like the bloody enlightenment. Sorry, the enlightenment is a fraud. We talk about achievements like getting to the moon and stuff like that. The greatest achievement, the greatest achievement would be to look at, anyway, since the agricultural revolution, this, this climb towards supremacist power that seems to be the compulsion of so many cultures, uh, a mind being the one that has gotten the closest to that peak. And it's, 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 it's it's the it's the root of evil it just did it just is brianna joy gray did a zoom phone phone in a couple of years ago remarkable venture i participated i tried to articulate how racism manifests to me and how it might be addressed i found i couldn't speak the reality just looms so large. And I came across the notion just the other day that if we live quite snugly and smugly, it, that we in fact live snugly and smugly in an apartheid reality. Uh, in our unequal American society, our unequal English society, our unequal French, whatever it is, they are apartheid systems only partly racial, which is the, the defining factor in apartheid. Apparently it's a racial, uh, uh, um, um, it's, a, it's a racial um, uh, uh, setup. Um, uh, uh, but it entirely, but, it, but our lives entirely hinge on the, the Roman citizen reality. They were, as in Greece, the minority, surrounded by a mass of slaves, foreign and domestic and women, and we, in our bones, we know it ain't right. Uh, and we, we, you know, and we create, we are traumatized by the knowledge and crushed by its inertia. If we even allow ourselves that knowledge. I mean, that's the whole, the whole miasma of the notion of supremacy. It becomes your actual definition. So when you say to people, that's been your definition, you need to get rid of it. That's the great challenge. That's the great challenge. Because it seems to me, um, so many of us have, we, we define ourselves to ourselves on the basis of our uh, relative superiority. Um, you know, if if you look at the what's that? The, what what do they call that? Um, meritocracy. I mean, who judges that? Who judges merit meritocratic worth? Well, the people who are the receivers of the merit, who who are the the presumers of the meritocracy. So. They decide that the best person on the planet is, is a very, very rich man who makes electric cars. Um, and he may be visibly, obviously, blatantly um, not that, but we treat him like that because he's rich. Yeah, you know, I mean, rich people in where I live, and, and and I don't envy them. I got I'm so glad I'm not among them. Not it's not in terms of money, but you know, it's what is apparent to me is 
the neighbors, the, the, the relationships you'd have to keep, <laughs> you know, um, I, I, I couldn't live in that impoverished community of the rich.